What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. And of course, it's that time of the week again where they have the Bolo Show. We got new comic book day. So, of course, we have some new books to talk about. This is the Bolo List that comes out every Wednesday morning to tell you what's on those first appearances, what's in that reader buzz, and what's on that variant buzz category, followed by Jack's long-term play at the end. Now, if you don't know what Bolo is, that stands for Be On The Lookout. And these are books that we tell you to be on the lookout for. We're not saying, hey, these are books that are going to make you money. It's just this is what has the buzz all across social media, and this is what to look for on New Comic Book Day. Right, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're trying to give you an idea of what other people are talking about, what other people are looking at, because oftentimes that does drive the market. But you've got a lot of options here. We're talking, as you mentioned, those first appearances, but we've also got reader buzz picks books that people are talking about that they are very interested in reading uh, may not have an effect on the secondary market, but we've seen how reader buzz books can turn into secondary market champions as well as those ever popular variant covers. Um, and we've got several interesting ones to highlight as well as some late printing variants. And then of course that long-term play where we talk about a book that uh, I believe long-term may be a slow riser. Right, and it's important to know that we record this Wednesday night on New Comic Book Day, then we premiere it live on the YouTube channel on Thursdays. So I want to take that time to thank everyone that comes into that chat during that live premiere. You guys are the Simple Man's Comics family week in and week out. And for those that listen to this on the audio version on that Simple Man's Comic podcast, thank you so much as well. With that being said, let's get into the first appearances. And kicking off first appearances this week, we have Thor number four with the cameo of Black Winter. I don't hear you say cameo much, Jack. No, and I got teased um, for even putting the word in there. And let me just tell you, it was literally like, I mean, touching acid for me to type cameo onto the bolo list. I had to put it, I felt like, though, because if you've read the issue, we this is a very loose first appearance. Um, so I don't want to mislead anyone. Um, so my hope is that your takeaway if, when you saw the list Wednesday morning was, if Bolo says this is a cameo, this is a cameo. <laughs> so Because we're talking about like a, um, yeah, like a tiny little character in a, in a panel. Um, we're talking about... Um, you know, it could be in an avatar. So the, it, it's one of those things where we're going to have to probably draw out a few issues. You know how Donny Cates does. Now, I'm very overall bullish on this character, mainly because this is the first arc in this brand new Donny Cates Thor series. And we know how important this Thor series is to Donny Cates. So I really have to believe he's going to pull out all the stops. This is going to be his A-game stuff. And I likely believe that any new character that he brings into the fray is going to be of some significance. And we've seen that traditionally with the way he goes about writing. So um, overall, I'm, I think that this character is solid. I think this may not be the book. Um, this may be a, a Venom 7 more than a Venom 9. But at the same point, as we know, Venom 7 certainly has value. So this is one to probably be picking up. Um, it, it may be more of a slow burn, certainly could have been a long-term play candidate. Um, I wish it had a little bit more meat there. Um, and, uh, that one in 25 Ryan Stegman variant that has been popular. Um, I have not seen where the trending price is at the it's moment. Right, it's right around ratio. Yes. He was around 40 for pre-order, but I'm not surprised seeing it dip. Um, being that I think that there was less, uh, kind of, like I said, I use the term meat, but there was a less a, a less prominent first appearance than I think was anticipated. And, and it's I think, still available on a lot of online retailers. So that kind of told me that, hey, the buzz on this book is kind of... Well, it was also one of those things. We've talked about this before. Um, we try not to reference this too often now because the last call show has become a, a really a solid piece of the Simpleman's Comics content portfolio. It's, it's an important industry. Thing. And I think time has proven that, you know, FOC ordering is, is key to the business uh, in all facets. Um, but, you know, when initially we, we heard that negativity about pre-FOC talk from the speculation community, um, we said that it's actually when publishers talk about books that you end up seeing 
the significance of the bump up in order. And I think the reason, Brian, you're seeing the availability of Thor is we knew about this Black Winter appearance go well in advance of FOC. So um, you started to see very early solicitations for that segment variant. This is one of those things about pre-ordering. Um, I don't, I think you got to just take the L if you pre-ordered this high, if you paid 40. Um, I don't think this is one to be like upset about. I think it's just. It's still a gorgeous cover on that, that Stegman variant. It is, but it's more one of those things where nine out of 10 times, man, you pre-order this hot variant early. It turns out to be more than what you thought at the early. We'd t- you, you wanted to get that pre-order in early. This is one of those occasions where it didn't work out that way. Um, this got hot early and then it just, the actual content didn't deliver the way people would have hoped. But again, from a reader buzz standpoint, because this, again, this, this is one of those books. Um, it hits all categories. It's made all categories of this list. Um, from a reader buzz standpoint, Donny Cates is continuing to deliver a captivating story. And we're going to talk about Donny Cates a couple times on this list this week. Yeah, so the next one we're talking about in the first appearance is Young Justice. He didn't have the issue on the list, but yeah. number 14. Great story. This is one of my favorite reads from DC Comics. So I always end up reading this. I like this one better than Marvel's Champions, which I kind of refer to almost as similar. But um, another great issue. And this had, what, new the new Young Justice team, right? Yeah, you bring up Champions. I actually enjoy that book as well, uh, typically when they've had that one running. I actually – I think some of the most fun stories have been told over the last several years between Teen Titans, Young Justice, uh, Champions, some of these younger – oriented teens we've talked about that brad you and i are pro progression with the comic uh story we want to see these young characters develop um i agree with you though i think the young justice books have been solid a lot of great variant covers over the the run um but yeah we have a new team it's a new incarnation of the young justice i don't think for my investors this is an, an investable book because it's not the first appearance of the young justice it's just a reconfiguration of the team for you to have to have any sort of financial payoff you would need this exact incarnation of the team to be duplicated in some other media form but i will say brian before we move on um just mentioning cover b's we always kind of highlight every once in a while that like you know this isn't our list but if i was gonna make this my list i gotta say there are some stellar stellar dc cover bees this week that mcdonald catwoman variant um the delato for batman and the outsiders was freaking phenomenal the the delato from batman and the outsiders is that black border background is right is reminiscent of what we've seen that series that he did with the marvel characters that was used for a store realms yeah it was used for a store exclusives and war of the realms one in ten incentive um it's from that same series of paintings that he's he's done um there was a yoon uh um flash variant that was incredible so there's a multitude of DC cover Bs, and they're consistent with it like that. It's funny that you mentioned it for Young Justice because of all the cover Bs, the Young Justice cover B was one that I didn't really like. Yeah, definitely not um, not one of the ones on the list, but in Yuck Lee, Batman's Grave 6, um, there was about five or six where just on cover art alone it was worth grabbing. Yeah. But the last one we're going to talk about for first appearances is one of my favorite books this week. Uh, I say favorite because I've only had a chance to read three books, but we're talking about that Star Wars Bounty Hunters number one. This book, I mean, it's just like you get about two pages in and then it's just all action through the rest of the whole issue. There's a couple times where I had to like stop and like reread panels because I couldn't really understand. I was like, what's going on? And I was trying to read it with my kids yelling in the room and stuff like that. But fantastic first issue. Uh, my favorite panel is the second to last panel. I'm not going to spoil it, but Boba Fett's traveling through space. And he gets a call about a, a bounty and decides to take it. But fantastic panel, ties back to movies. But I don't know if you had a chance to read this, but we got a first appearance in it as well, right? Right, yeah. Nakano Lash, um, re- relation to a uh, previous character. Um, I don't know, long term, it's you know, I, I file all of these Star Wars under some level of importance, but we just don't know what. So uh, as far as first appearances, I feel like all of them have validity, um, but we just, we really never know. I still harken back to that comment 
um, that the woman run in the Star Wars movie program where she said that it's not like we have years of comic books to reference. And it's like, well. Yeah, Kennedy. Yeah. It's like, man. Um, but anyways, this is another one that appears in multiple categories. It was one of the most paid attention to, most talked about, most in-demand books of the day. We've talked about the the progress that the secondary market has seen with Star Wars books. Right now, Dark Horse first appearances are some of the most picked back issues we see in the, the community, whether it's the IG comic community or the various Facebook groups. Um, people are definitely mining those back issue bins, looking for those first appearances. And then as far as this release, talking about, you know, anything bounty hunter related has always been hot, right? About Boba Fett has always been at growing up Especially on the heels of Mandalorian. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say is now you've got Mandalorian. It's really just amped it up another notch because going into Mandalorian, I was kind of salty. I kind of had this attitude of like, if it's not Boba Fett, why do I care? Um, and they instantly made you care. Yeah. Um, and then expanded that universe and that, you know, type of character, um, immensely right there. And again, I'm not the biggest, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fan in that I've seen all the movies. Um, but I'm not a Star Wars fan. Like I've never, I'm not a book reader. I haven't, you know, if you're a Clone Wars fan, you have, you get more into the whole right Mandalore, but, um, this was a great week. Cause you had three, I mean, three Star Wars books that released yep. at all, I think could have made the list between bounty hunters. Uh, we had rise of Kylo Ren number four, right. And then we had Darth Vader as well. Yeah, and I think Rise of Kylo Ren number four ultimately will perform very well. I just think it wasn't talked about mo mainly because of bounty hunters. I just think, I, you know, I think that the market is just now getting adjusted to talking about Star Wars in this manner. And there's a lot of hype on the incentive variant for this, but I'm also seeing that Carrie Andrews variant, that regular priced one, has yep. been sold out at a lot of places. But that Dave Johnson variant is... yeah. Phenomenal. Dave Johnson's one of those artists where he's not a big name. Um, but once in a while he hits an absolute home run. He has he has that type of potential. So that wraps up the first appearance section for this week. Go ahead and let us know in the comments. Did you pick any of these books up? What do you think of the first appearance? Definitely think it's a cameo, or do you think it's a first appearance for Thor? As Jack saying it's a cameo <laughs> gets you to think. But either way, we're gonna move now into the reader buzz kicking off reader buzz this week we have that new jonathan hickman creator own book from image and decorum number one i read this so it's got interior art by mike huddleston and it's and it kind of changes as the story goes throughout i love the interior art on this and mike huddleston has a cover for it but either way Big first issue if you're a sci-fi fan. It's kind of remind me of like sci-fi apocalypto if you ever watched the apocalypto movie. But I enjoyed the first issue. What is it? I think it's a six issue mini. Yep. Yeah, six issue. Um I heard a lot of debate on this one on a couple other podcasts. Um, some of the more speculation driven podcasts. They were talking about mini versus full. Brian, you and I have covered this pretty well, I think, at this point. I don't think it matters anymore, man. we got to move beyond the fear of the miniseries because the reality is um, that's just strategically how these books are being marketed. That's really all it is. Uh, the numbering system, um, the traditional numbering system has become antiquated, which is also why it's such a big deal what Todd McFarlane's done. Um, so th this one coming as a six-issue mini doesn't scare me away. Jonathan Hickman is... Um, one of the hottest names in comics right now. Um, so anything with his name attached to it is going to get a lot of attention. And this book certainly has, there's a multitude of store variants. There were definitely people paying attention to it. I think that's why this one's going to be a slow burn on the secondary market, Brian. I don't expect to see this one immediately doing any sort of major numbers. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if this one gets the quick option. Um, it has that kind of buzz to it. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. And then maybe we start to see a drying up um, of copies, but <clears throat> excuse me, this one's going to fall into the same sort of not traps, but the same sort of things that we've seen some other image releases, especially ones that image really backs um, hard where we're seeing the multitude of covers, the multitude of store variants. I think that's going to play and ultimately an impact um, on its secondary market. Say, 
success early on. But if the reader buzz stays strong, uh, if the book gets optioned, you know, we'll see that carry through. Next one on the reader buzz is cable number one. Seems like we get new cable series every three or four years or so. But this one had me intrigued. I picked it up. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I actually like the cover A, the Phil Noto cover on this one. Um, the Capullo one is nice as well, but I just didn't want to spend the money on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this, again, I think a lot of people were judging a book by its cover negatively, um, which is a weird thing to say about a cover that's so great because I think most people really like that Noto cover. Um, when I mean by judging the book by its covers, they were judging Cable by his appearance. They were looking at his appearance and saying, well, he looks scrawny or he looks, I actually had that comment on the bowl list. Where people are missing out is this is Kid Cable. This is the younger Cable um, that we were introduced to in previous storylines. Um, this is actually his first solo series. So this is actually a prominent and kind of important series. Maybe they should have looked at the marketing. Maybe the, it should have been called Kid Cable or um, there should be a some sort of trade dress um, tagline similar to unbelievable Gwenpool or something like that. Uh, you know, something where something that they add to it, um, you know, so that it, it really drives home that this isn't just an art direction decision. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I, this is what I haven't read yet, but I was, I'm interested to read. Uh, I, let's be honest also like a cable series hasn't been prevalent since the early nineties. Um, the cable hasn't been able to carry a solo series. So I'm open to anything. Um, I, I, I've said this before. I would rather see more solo series featuring, you know, prominent characters of cables level than I would some of these random teams of, you know, marauders and fallen angels and all that, all of that. But um, I also think, you know, this one made the variant buzz section as well there you mentioned the capullo cover that capullo cover is the hidden gems are quite often extremely well done that one's incredible um this is one of the nicer scotty young variants i've seen i i, I it's not on the list but i must note it um because it's a black cover it's a very large scotty young image i think it'll be a tough one getting graded scotty young books are popular to get signed and graded so i think that's one to long term keep an eye out for very long term but also, you know, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, you mentioned Scotty Young and Jonathan Hickman and previously in Decorum, um, my local comic book store, Third Eye Comics, they had signing set up for Jonathan Hickman and Scotty Young. And of course, with current events, they're still happening, but they got postponed. And it's just, I'm anxious to go. It's up there in Annapolis store. Yeah. And yeah, so, and then of course, you and I have talked about, uh, the blank variants, the colored blank variants. So we get a black blank variant with cable. At regular price. At regular price, which obviously they've done it with the black. You notice that? The black, they'll go regular price. It seems like any other color they want to try to add add price to. That's um, I think having a high priced black variant, you know the diamond shipping. Right. It's going to be some right. happy customers. Yeah, it's going to be that. That's, that's a fair assessment, Brian. Um, I didn't know if maybe it was an ink thing cost of ink type yeah. thing, the way they're looking at it. But, um, but yeah, and I still think with that eye, with the shine, um, there's a lot that can be done with those black covers. I, I can't wait to see artists really take their creativity there. And again, we've talked about this. It's a weird long-term play blank variants, but blank variants get drawn on every day. That makes the overall number of them dwindle smaller and smaller. And a book with the the cable trade dress. This may be, I don't know if this is the first cable blanket very well, maybe, um, but there's, it's certainly not a prevalent book. And those are the ones that later on in the secondary market have become expensive. Like, you know, she Hulk and things like that, where it's like, there's not a ton out there. Right. And the next one on the reader buzz list, we're going to talk about a dynamite book with Deja Thoris number four. So I've talked a couple times on the show, um, about how there's a couple times every now and again, there's a book that doesn't really fit any of the categories on the list. This is a prime example. Um, this book I had to put on there because I just, Tuesday I started seeing everybody posting it as their like book they were going to pick up. Um, and I really think it's just for the cover and it's of cover a, um, 
And so Rio does a regular cover, right? Rio does a regular cover. It, it, this is a phenomenal cover, but I mean, he's consistent with that type of work. So I don't know, maybe I'm numb to it where I look at the cover and I go, excellent. But he does that all the time for Deja Thoris, for, you know. For yeah, that's where I like him. That's where Antonia. we've talked about his, his covers before. I'm like, oh, they're too dark. But this is where I like his covers of Deja Thoris, the Red Sonia, the Vampirellas. So, and, um, but this one's like it sold out at Midtown. Um, it was one of like key collectors books that they noted. Um, there, were, there were people. To, and I noticed this week um, there were a few books that sold out. The Jim Henson book. That sold out, uh, and I can't really figure out why they sold out. Um, I think Midtown might have restocked because I was checking. Not I can see, well, see. I can see that because they should. They, I wouldn't imagine they were books that would be sold out at Diamond. Because again, you know, there's a difference between sold out at retailer and sold out at Diamond. Um, a book can be sold out at Diamond and not sold out at your retailer. It can be sold out at your retailer and not sold out at Diamond. Um, so, you know, that doesn't surprise me, but the bottom line is there is a demand for the book due to the cover. I would say if you really were into this cover and you wanted to add some value to it, be on the lookout. They released the limited versions, the virgin versions of these covers. Um, and they usually, they pre-order them, I want to say for like $35, $40. Um, and they can oftentimes retain and gain some serious value. So um, if you were really into this cover, that's something to be on the lookout for. Then moving on, the last one we're going to talk about in the Reader Buzz list is another indie book with Sweetheart Number One. Yeah, this is another one. Honestly, I wasn't really um, horror's hot. Yeah, I wasn't familiar. I wasn't familiar with it. Was um, Nick from Key Collectors Pick of the Week, um, which threw me off because I hadn't heard about it. And then Pops Foster, shout out to Pops from the um, Lords of the Long Box Facebook group. He picked it. Um, that threw me off. I, but again, I saw, so I was like, Oh man, people are talking about it. Um, in, in people of prominence, this is uh, action lab, right? With yeah, action lab, man. So it's a, an action lab pops every now and again, right? It's, some just, of the horror. it's just really hard for me to predict when that's going to happen. Um, so that's just for my personal as a buyer, um, they pop, but they go flat pretty quick as well. And as do a lot of indies, especially those real small press ones. And especially when it is because of a gimmicky thing. And that's not a disrespectful, you know, way of putting it, but that's, you know, when something, when I, I use, I'm using the term gimmicky more to describe the way that people jump on an issue number one, um, because something, because the concept sounds interesting and okay. they don't. Agrasuko is sitting on shelves today. It's right. Two and Ag Agra Agrasuko number two and the first, pr the second printer number one, which I almost put on the list because I did see people talking about it. Um, but yeah, Agrasuko is a prime example. Now, I think Agrasuko is going to have a second life when the Netflix series comes back yeah. in, in the fall. But until then, yeah, that, that was a one week wonder. Um, so this one will be interesting, though. Um, I hope. I really hope it made it in the hands of readers, Brian. I hope people read it and loved it and, um, and are excited and are going to keep reading the series. And I hope it, it's one of those things we hear from our viewers that we need to check out. So you and I pick up. It, it, this one missed my radar. So shout out to those who were um, paying attention to this. Yeah, I remember reading the solicit, right? And I've read there's talking about Ellicott City. There's an El I haven't read it yet. There's an Ellicott City in Maryland. I was wondering if that was kind of what it was referencing or not. But either way. Um, yeah, it's, it's sold out of a lot of online retailers, but that's wrapping up the reader buzz. We're going to move right on now into the variant buzz section. We have that Avengers Wasteland number three. This is that one in 25 Zafino variant. And ironically, Zafino has a following. He does great covers. I've seen this available at online retailer still and it, I, I figured with the Zafino buzz alone that it probably would be sold out but either way it's still a gorgeous cover yeah this is one of those ones that I see people post and I wonder like are people posting it just because it's a Zafino cover and they think it's a nice cover or are they actually out there buying it because I, I don't see it truly moving um and a lot of Zafino covers are funny um a lot of them get talked about, but a lot of them get overlooked. There's a lot of them that come out and really don't um, don't move the needle. Um, Zafino actually released, I believe, a Hawkman cover 
uh, cover B as well uh, from DC today. So, uh, you know, very active day for Mr. Safino. But uh, it's funny because a lot of times he'll have, there'll be a one in 50 and a one in 25. He'll have the one in 25 and it's out selling yeah. for more than the 150. Yeah. And because he's had, he's like similar to Dave Johnson, where he's a guy where he can do a cover that just really connects with people and they love it. Um, but people tend to look to him more than some other other names like a Dave Johnson. The, the people expect um, his covers to do well. This may be one of those. Right, and then sticking with Avengers, we have that Avengers number 30, the second print for this. This is your favorite book on the list. I'm convinced of that. <laughs> no, I don't do babies. Well, <laughs> that's, that came out. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a baby comic collector. Yeah, easy to say. Brian's made a couple babies, but anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So this has the uh, the new Star Brand um, baby front and center on the cover. So you know, for those who are invested in the Star Brand thing, and there seems to be a ton of people interested in. And you and I have talked about how it didn't really do anything for us. Um, you know, again, it's I gotta applaud Marvel though for taking another important moment in the comic and then putting it front and center on the cover. If only DC Comics would have done that today. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into that in a minute, but <laughs> got bone to pick with you. Yeah. Grr, grr, grr. And the next one we're gonna talk <laughs> about is that Marvel Tales Silver Surfer. This was the Warren 50 and Heck Lee variant. I saw this, I mean, where they're selling it for like a hundred bucks right out the gate for some of it. I, and I kind of understand some of that for one in 50 and the MSRP on it. Gorgeous cover. I mean, I'm not a huge Silver Surfer fan, but I love this freaking cover. But what do you think about it, Jack? What do we got going on with it? What's the buzz? I'm tired of talking about these. It's the same, because it's the same thing. Um, yeah, it's selling for a lot of money. Um, so it gets people's attention. It may even make people's hot list because of the overall dollar figure. But again, and I'm going to preach this, Brian, until I'm blue in the face. People are looking at these Marvel tales all wrong. They're looking at them saying, oh, $150 is doing so well. It's three times ratio. You cannot count ratio with this book. This book costs twice the value of a regular book. Therefore, the ratio is essentially double. Truly hitting any sort of ratio um, it, it is – is far more expensive um, to break even on um, the again the purchase of this book. Uh, you know, at at four dollars a book cost on average to retailers is two hundred dollars. Um, yeah, so and then it, you also hear, um, especially for each specific title as well, how many shops are really going to order fifty of these? Which makes sense, right? Right. But the problem is over the collective of all these issues, it kind of it kind of saturates, right? Because you got. How many of these? It was Bartel, and then you got Enhyak Lee, and each time you're going, how many are you really going to order 50 of these? Well, yeah, but now you have a bunch of different of the different covers, but the same artist. To me, that kind of washes some of it out. That's just my opinion, but... Yeah, and I agree, and I do. I mean, at the same point, I think somebody who um, had the patience and the finances to put, like, the set together um, of a given artist's Marvel Tales variant, it would be a beautiful set. These books are incredible, but again... Um, the simple act of taking the trade dress away, making it artificially scarce through, you know, the incentive program, <sighs> the just the cost associated just doesn't seem to line up. The next one we're going to talk about for variant buzz is Gwen Stacy number two. This is the one in 50 incentive variant by Ryan Brown, right? Yeah, gorgeous cover. And it wasn't the only nice cover for this book. There was a few covers that were really nice. But Ryan Brown is killing it. He's another one that's on, on the uprise, upswing. Um, nice to see. Good placement here, though. Putting him in that 1 in 50. Um, typically, we've seen Ryan Brown in that cover B. Um, and then, exclusive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So being in that 1 in 50, I think um, this book, I could see not only – rising in value this week but consistently and being a book to pay attention to long term because man those gwen stacy variants um at least spider gwen we've seen dry up on the market and just go up and up and up and up and up and up over time um and then you mentioned store exclusives i you know i'd be remiss not to mention our channel sponsor frankie's comics with that amazing spider gwen variant that 
you know, look, we can say whatever we want about store variants. And yes, it is a sponsor, but that book is selling above the original asking price. That was a profit making um, release for those who bought in on that initial release from Frankie's comics. So again, shout out. just released the, what was supposed to be a WonderCon MegaCon exclusive this weekend shared between, um, I know Golden Apple shares with them. I think there's some others. Mm. But so they decided to go ahead and sell it with everything that's going on. They sold this weekend. Frankie's listed it at 4 p.m. I think on Saturday, and he was sold out of his by 4:15. Right, and of course, what Brian's referencing is that that one unmasked. without the, the unmasked one where you can see your face. Um, yeah, it's. I'm a little disappointed it didn't end up being the convention exclusive because I think that that would have again added another layer of difficulty. So you don't have like the individuals buying co- tons of copies. You end up. I understand them though. Out. They don't want to get hold stuck with them. Hold them inventory if those get canceled because you don't know what's going to happen. And by the time they would have, by the time they would have turned around to sell them, um, it would have been later. You can't fault the uh, the businessman for you know covering your expenses. I'm just speaking more ideologically um, from the market perspective. But either way, the demand for that book was incredible. So um, yeah, so shout out to them for what what they what they were able to put together with that one because that was it, it's hard to make a uh, a a store exclusive that penetrates the secondary market. It really is um, to 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 be able to sell three thousand copies, which again, guys, is what Marvel requires. Um, not five hundred, not a thousand, not four hundred. Uh, this one might have been different though if they got it in their original allotment, right? So what if they go order 3,000 of the... Yes, then you can get 1,000 copies beyond your original, or any other cover. And and, and, and I'm not 1,000% on that. Um, yeah, but that, no that idea, is, that's why I don't get into the... I'm yeah, sure. that's what that, the way, that's the way it's... That's how stores, though, are able to do like um, 3,000 of a cover and then like 1,000 of a virgin is at that second cover, you don't have to go all the way to 3,000. Um, but, but yeah, so, you know... But for for a store to be able to sell through um, books the way they were able to sell through books um, is incredible. That does not happen too often, and we're already seeing people with crazy eBay listings of those books. So it's not on the list, but Jack got to do say Bolo Audible as as we've heard before, right up in the reader buzz. There was a, there was a variant that was on the list that I'm a Homer for, right? Everyone knows I'm a Bruce Campbell fan. Everyone knows I'm an Army of Darkness fan. But they had that Death to the Army of Darkness number two that came out this week. Of course, you know how Dynamite does with their covers. But there was a Sergio de Villa, de Villa I'm going to butcher that name. And then Mirko and Dolfo, both of those variants. Gorgeous covers. Sold out a lot of places online. Um, I, pr- I tried to get it. I didn't pre-order it. And I was left without it so i picked up cover a there's also a bunch of ben oliver covers for this one i believe as well but yeah the Merca, i want to highlight especially with the variant buzz section the murka and dolfo almost has that um asm 238 hobgoblin yeah. look to it the way that uh you kind of get the uh like slicing of the character in half um it kind of has that that sort of feel to it but yeah and murka and dolfo is hot right now like her name is 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 carrying weight. So when she shows up on well, especially solicit, when they put it before every one of her actual titles. <laughs> right. So so when she shows up on solicits, um, people are grabbing it. Another one to mention while we're here, books not on the list. Uh, read only memories. Um, read only memories number two, the one in ten variant was done by Peach Momoko, was this huge secondary market sensation. Obviously, it's a hot artist. A lot of people are putting completionist collections together. Very limited book. We saw that heat carry over this week to the Read Only Memories number three, one in 10, but was not done by Peach Momoko. And I think there's going to be some disappointed people who are, that book's going to end up having kind of a slow crash. Because I don't think that that Read Only Memories number two was hot because of the series. No disrespect to those involved in that series. I think it was because of Peach Momoko's popularity with the secondary market crowd. So that's going to wrap up the variant buzz section real quick. Before we get into Jack's long-term play, we want to remind you guys that we just aired episode two of that Simple Man's Comics and Friends podcast. This time we had a comic book retailer, online retailer, and store owner, Benjamin from Black Cape Comics, as well as Nico from comicbookspeculation.com and the Comic Book Wars YouTube channel. And we had a fantastic episode with that, didn't we, Jack? 
Yeah, we really did. Um, I had a great time talking to those guys. It was excellent to get some different perspectives. Um, oftentimes, we talk about the retailer perspective, so it was nice to have an actual retailer here. Um, and then also, uh, you know, a YouTuber in, in Nico from the Comic Book Wars podcast and uh, he did Nico Time, uh, excellent interview series, kind of like the Larry, we call it the Larry King of Comics. Um, and an excellent uh, column, The Weekend Update on comicbookspeculation.com. Um, he was, he's a guy who, uh, Brian and I, you, we've been fans of and wanted to work with for a long time. So it was exciting to get to, um, get a chance to do that. So, right. So again, the audio version of that's up on Simplemans Comics podcast and the long form video is up there right now. But if you don't want to watch that long form video, don't worry. We got you covered. We're going to cut micro content for each one of those topics. So you can watch those at your convenience, but we're going to get into it right now. And that's Jack's. Long-term play of the week. Seems like we can't shake it. We can't stop talking about it right now. It is in comics, but the long-term play this week is Punchline, Second Prince from Batman 89, and Hell Arisen number three. Before you get to get into it, we kind of hinted at this at the in the middle of the show. Holy crap, DC. Like... It's bad enough they did a recolor, but the recolor was even horrible. They just like recolored like the Batman logo and it was, it was horrible as far as second prints go. Yeah, the recolor is barely a recolor. If you hold up the first print and the second print next to each other, which I did today, it's astounding the the difference. It's it's so minimal. Um really, really, I mean, you just have to be, and I have I'm so frustrated with this situation. I almost just brought a hard f-bomb but it just you really have to not be trying at all of dc comics um it, and it's so frustrating because here's a company we're hearing oh they don't like the publishing numbers and they're not happy with the publishing side well then this isn't the most difficult thing in the world for you to do at this point you're in the minority literally do what everyone else is doing marvel's got it We've got IDW doing it. We've got Boom doing it. Image is doing it. You've got uh, creator-owned people coming into the market, figuring it out. Okay, right off the bat, I need to do this. We talked about it with David Pick up Boer. panel and throw right. it on the cover. <laughs> we talked about it with David Boer and Drew Zucker. We were like, if you guys go to late prints with Canto, change the cover. And it, that was crucial for them. That's added sales for them. And you're right. Marvel – all they're doing is pulling a panel from the inside of the book, throwing it on the cover. But we're, here we are talking about star brand saying, Hey, kudos to them because they took a monumental moment in the comic, put it on the cover. They did the same thing with miles Morales. They did the same thing with storm ranger. Look at the Immortal Hulk, Immortal Hulk. Look at the uh, venom. Look at the connecting cover we've got from storm ranger. You cannot tell me that that's not driving sales. Now, DC comics can come back at me and start bragging about how many sales they may have gotten for hell arisen three and Batman 89 second print because I'm sure sales were nice for these books. But at the end of the day, it's got to pale in comparison to your potential. You want proof? You're soliciting a variant right now, an incentive variant with punchline on the cover. And look at the numbers that that book is doing. Look at the, the amount of Instagram posts you're seeing from retailers soliciting that item. Look at how many people are, are buying it. I'm getting DMs left and right. Double and selling for double ratio out the out, out the gate. out the gate, and people are asking me like, "Hey, should I be pre-ordering twenty five copies?" Things like that. Um, the interest in this character no. is 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 so feverish um, that it's one of those things where if you would have thrown punchline on the cover, you'd be printing money for this second print. Not only that, you'd have a collectible that would be forever important on the secondary market, which I don't think comic companies consider enough, Brian. They're not considering legacy. Now, we're talking about all of this negative stuff, right? About the long-term play. It's kind of weird. Um, I admit that. But at the end of the day, I have to put it as a long-term play because we can feel however we want. We can feel punch drunk from talking about punchline. But the reality of the situation is, I don't know if my entire time in comics, I've seen, a, I've seen popular characters and I've seen characters take off quickly. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen something as dominant of the news cycle as talked about as punchline as at secondary market prices being what they are for punchline. 
you have two different books popping at a $40 level. Um, these second prints are hitting like 10, 12 bucks uh, right out the bait that which is about the level I expect them to be at I honestly see these as 10 to 15 dollar books they'd be 25 to 30 dollar books at least if they had different covers but being with a slight recolor I think they'll be at the, that 10 to 15 dollar level and it, and it could be more if if the first print becomes a hundred dollar book then yeah it could be a 30 dollar book it could be a 40 dollar book so there's potential there no doubt um dc comics may be thinking about a third print i don't know if anybody from dc comics is paying attention but oh my god if you are please 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 we don't need another recolored cover there is no point to that um you can still grab do everything you want to do for readers and change the cover of the of the book and and also play to the collectibles market and again you're just going to increase sales. Another thing that's weird about this one, Brian, is when the FOC was for this book, which I think is going to play into why I think this is a good long-term book. Um, the FOC for this book was the Monday before the first prints were going to release that Wednesday. Yeah, when it's normally the week after. And we, we talked about that. Right. Now, a lot of times that makes it difficult for, for stores to gauge. And you may sit there and go, well, yeah, but duh, store's new punchline was going to be hot. Yeah, they did, but it's still difficult before these, these books have released to make some sort of major commitment um, to bring in these second prints when you're still thinking that it's just not where their brain was. I don't think their brain was on these second prints. It, as evidenced by, look at how many Batman 92, again, advertisements you're seeing. And, they, and I, I hope your feed is similar to mine, but I saw way more solicitations and advertisements for Batman 92 um, than I ever did for these, these late printings. Um, yeah, and it's bad enough. I mean, you, you almost have to look at the barcode on these to know if the, <laughs> the, the second print, like we talked about how low Absolutely. So I, I, I really don't think that you're going to see these um, and then the other thing is that they sold out everywhere. It's a no brainer buy, right? What's the easiest decision for you to buy when you walk into your LCS right now? Um, if you missed punchline, well, yeah, this is a great opportunity to pick it up. If you grabbed punchline, then you're already invested. You're already in the profit. Double down, grab that second print. Now you can put the first and the second print up together or collect them. And if you're trying to get all the rainbow or do whatever you're trying to do, because that's all you can do with DC is, is chase the rainbow because they're not going to redo the cover. Um, so it, it, whatever it is that you're going to, you're going to do, it, it seems like a no brainer buy. So I, I really think that these things are going to dry up. Um, I don't think long-term you're going to see them. It, it's tough though, because the precedent isn't good. Um, if you look at the second print for Naomi, it's a ghost. You don't see it in stores, but it sort of plateaued around $20 when the first print was real hot. Um, and it's now about a $10 book. Um, the second print for Teen Titans 12, the first Batman who laughs, same deal, never reached more than like 10 bucks. But again, recolors, these red covers. Um, I, I think that that is a major contributing factor, um, but we'll have to see. But either way, DC Comics has shown with Naomi, with Batman who laughs, when they have a character that's popular, they will take that ball and run with it. Um, they did it both with Naomi, who then appeared in Action Comics and Young Justice and so on and so forth. They did it with uh, Batman Who Laughs, who then has appeared in everything. Uh, so I expect them to do that with Punchline. I think Punchline is going to get heavily marketed. I think we're going to see her over the next several months. I think she will be continue to be the talk of the comics market. So I think coming down, when we look back at this release day, um, I think most people would look at it and be like, man, I should have picked up those second prints for cover price. So I think they're a great long-term play. If you can grab them for cover price, grab them. I hope you pre-ordered them. We definitely wanted to highlight them. We talked about them on the last call show. Um, so, you know, the only thing is, man, DC Comics, I wish you would change that cover. We might have had an absolute classic collectible. I just hope this character turns out to be something really good. <laughs> it's getting a lot of praise and a lot of attention. Um, I mean, if you knew nothing about comics and were wanting to fit in with the comic community or comic store, um, it reminds me of an episode of, there's a TV show that used to come on, IT Crowd, and they wanted to fit in with the soccer players and learn how to speak soccer language. So all you'd have to do to fit into the comic community is just go into like a comic book store right now and be like, punchline! 
am I right? <laughs> Just start a whole conversation on it. Everyone's talking about it. But here's the thing. They may not have had big plans for Punchline, but I promise they do now. It's just like Spider-Gwen. When Spider-Gwen got created, that was a one issue. Was never supposed to be important. But the community demanded by spending their dollars. I promise you the way that the community is spending their dollars on Punchline, if James Tinian was going to kill her in issue 100, I promise you somebody's already gone and said, oh, no, you're not. So I will say I did pick up the second print for Hellraiser number three today, and I didn't pick it up for me. Um, remember how we said we're putting Hellraiser number three, the first print, in a bolo box for March? I'm gonna add this one to it, so whoever gets it in that mystery, it's gonna be bundled up. They're gonna get both the first and second print. That and that's pretty cool. So you're gonna be able to chase the rainbow. <laughs> I'd rather just have skills. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> But there's Jack's long-term play, and that is the bolo list for this week. Let us know again in the comments. What did you like to read this week? What do you think of the long-term play? Some people let us know on Instagram already, and it's a wide range from, hey, that's a crappy long-term play, and that's a good long-term play. But welcome to everybody. Comments, their opinions. We always say it's your money. Buy what you like. Take it or leave it. But let us know what is your pick for this week. And with that being said, this is the bolo list, and we'll see you guys in the next video.